sports fans, I'm here with my dear friend Janet Fox, my writing buddy, my colleague, and um, I'm, I'm thrilled that she's here in Texas with me, and I've invited her here to talk about Faithful, her, her brand new book set in Yellowstone. It's a historical fiction for young adults, and so I'm going to quit yammering and, and uh, invite Janet to talk about it. So um, why don't you just tell us about the book and what inspired the writing of it? Let's start with that. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. So pleased to be here. Um, I started writing Faithful um, when after my mother died. So the story was really inspired from from the heart. Um, uh, my mom died quite suddenly, and I had always written for adults, but never contemplated writing for kids, which is an odd thing, um, and then found in my mom's papers a series of stories that she had written for kids. And it was almost as if she was telling me, now you need to try this, you need to think about this in every way um, and you know reaching out to me from wherever she is now and so I decided to write a story about a girl who lost her mother and um, and how she coped with that and uh, setting it in Yellowstone which is where it said set in Yellowstone in 1904 um, brought another heart thing together with with my mom because we love the Yellowstone region. We have a cabin not too far from uh, Yellowstone within the greater Yellowstone region. And so I was able to incorporate everything I love about that area with everything about my mom. And so that's that's truly the inspiration for the story. I had no <clears throat> idea that your mother was whispering to you in the pages of that book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it really is. Um, the, the presence of the mother in the book is very, very moving and very much... Uh, um, She's the angel of the book, I would say. She is, and she's she's only present in a few scenes, um, and and yet she truly guided Maggie. And Mag the the what I was trying to say about Maggie was how much of her mother she carried inside herself, and how she had to find that. That was her story, her way of coming of age. It was to find her mother within her. And the fact that she went to Yellowstone, a place that mm -hmm. her mother loved too, mm -hmm. um, just creates that wonderful mm -hmm. tie mm -hmm. um, that, that you see throughout the book. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong tie, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't realize that the, that the story started out with these letters, but what other kinds of research did you have to do? I mean, with it being set in 1904. In, in setting it in 1904, it, uh, I had to research Yellowstone itself in 1904 and spend a lot of time in the park. Um, there's a wonderful new research center just outside the park gates devoted entirely to the history of Yellowstone. And so I was able to go look at archival materials from 1904, the records of the superintendent. I actually had weather records. It was really, you know, how many animals they saw and of what variety. So I, I had fairly accurate, very accurate um, uh, information. And then looking at 1904, one of the things that, that came to the fore for me and... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got the audience. And, <laughs> Sorry. But that's all right. And one of the things that came to the fore uh, was how young women of that era were so constrained as to what they could do, especially, actually, ironically, women of a certain class were told how to live, how to behave, how to, who to marry. And, um, and I thought it was really important for girls to understand how much freedom and independence they have today. Mm -hmm and how much they've gained by, um, by the passage of time and the emancipation of women. Um, 1904 women didn't have the vote and, and had very few choices in what they would do for their future. So um, that part of the research um, came from reading. I read a lot of, of uh, um, things written at that time period just to gather the voice and I also read a, a lot of works about that period. I think one of the w most wonderful things about Faithful are the, the chapter headings, oh, you know, where you have right. quotes from stories that were written 
in that time period. And it does, it helps bring, it helps give the, the novel a feeling of mm -hmm. really being set in the time. Mm -hmm. When you're speaking about the different constraints that um, girls and women had back then, I think one of your more interesting characters is Mrs. Gale, mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. definitely um, not constrained too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's a woman on her own, and she plays a large role in Maggie's life. And um, did, did when you were researching, did you find a lot of photographs um, mm -hmm. that you that you then brought brought to the to the page via Mrs. Gale. Yeah, I'm a very visual person and one of my research tools, one of my important research tools is photography. Um, and early in researching the book, a friend of mine mentioned um, a uh, well-known um, Western photographer whose name just escapes me for the moment, but um, who became she became the the um, uh, Icon or the the example for Mrs. Gale. I used I used her pictures, and I used her history a little bit and and twisted it to to create the character of Mrs. Gale. Um, and you know, there's a surprising number of women in photography at that time. It was a medium that women could could handle, and for whatever reason, was a more acceptable form of expression, self-expression, than, than some other forms of self-expression. Even though the cameras were huge and, uh, and, and unwieldy and required certain, you know, strength to carry around, um, there were quite a number of, of, of Western photographers at the time. So, um, I, I really love the... I love that part of it, and I mm -hmm. love, I think, the, the very fact that it was a huge amount of equipment um, allowed Mrs. Gale to need an assistant mm -hmm. and and, um, and there was Maggie to be her assistant and, right. it, and it gave her that gumption I think you know her association mm -hmm. with Mrs. Gale to see what was possible mm -hmm. for her own life yeah and and I and I wanted the camera to become a metaphor that that Maggie was was seeing things differently and learning how to see things differently and so the, all of the um, the scenes in which Maggie uses the camera, She's focusing on on smaller and smaller details. Um, Mrs. Gale talks about landscape photography, but Maggie's focusing on on details. In, and of course, Yellowstone's filled with details. If you look at it closely, you can take wonderful pictures of hot springs and and um, mud pots and. and so well, I think one of the wonders of your book is that attention to detail. Um, you really do feel like you're right there in the park mm. as you're reading. Um, you know, you, you can smell it, mm. you can feel the crispness of the air mm -hmm. and the cold and, mm -hmm. you know, and that you're, you're so in in the nature mm -hmm. of the park. It, it feels like that and I, and I that's just an, a tribute to you as a, as a fine craftswoman well, as you. far as um, getting those details mm. down. Um, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about some of the obstacles that you encountered in the writing of this book. Well, one of the big ones for me um, was getting the opening um, chapters right. And um, my editor encouraged me to incorporate more backstory, and that was difficult because I didn't want to slow the action down too much with a lot of backstory. So I used a flashback, and you know, I, <laughs> that's probably one of the things that, I, that still gives me twitches when I, when I look at the book now. I used flashbacks in order to tell Maggie's mother's story to some degree at the very beginning of the book, because I really had to set that information up for the reader um, in order to understand Maggie's journey. And um, it's not a technique I would necessarily use again, but it worked, I think in this case, it worked better than having to take the story way back before, um, before she gets to Yellowstone. I wanted to get her to Yellowstone as quickly as possible. That was where the story really started for me and for Maggie, too. Yeah. However, I have to say those chapters that are set in New Jersey um, in Newport. really, yeah. I think, um, give, you know, let us see the juxtaposition. You know, we, oh, we clearly see the life that Maggie is having to leave right. behind um, for the life that she is oh, now being really thrown into against her will. Right. 
And so, and I actually love that part of it because she herself has to come to love Yellowstone in her own right. way. And there's a lot of resistance on her part from the beginning. Right. So, um, so I think you really handled that, that oh, front good. matter um, good. really well. Oh, good. Well, did, uh, now that I've asked you about obstacles, <laughs> let me turn the tide here. Were there any surprises that you encountered that you, when you wrote it, you just went, oh, of course. Yeah, that scene, well, if I tell, I don't want to tell too much, but there is a dramatic scene at the, the really the climax scene of the book um, was a scene that came out of nowhere. And I, I had no idea um, what was going to happen in that scene and how it was going to play out. And I was simply writing the story. I'm a very organic writer. I, I tend to just get it out there and then I go back and mess with it a lot. Um, and this scene came out of nowhere, and I wrote it in about two hours, and very intense writing. And when I got up from the desk, I was literally shaking. I was physically shaking all over because it's a very dramatic, intense, emotional scene. And that scene had the least editing of any scene in the book. Amazing. It was uh, untouched, almost untouched by me, almost untouched by my editor. And so it, it, that truly came from a place deep within, and, and obviously was, you know, stayed there. Don't you think those moments in our writing lives, that's what we live yes. for? I mean, <laughs> yes. there's so yes. many moments when it doesn't <laughs> yes. happen like that, no. when you're, you're changing every word in the sentence and you just, you know, you have those moments where yes. you think, I, why am I doing this? Yes. You know, life is too short. <laughs> but then you have that one moment where everything, everything works, yep. where it, and it feels so much like a gift. It's yeah. like, oh, I earned this. <laughs> yeah. And I think you have to write through all of those other moments in order to get to that moment. And that's that's the hardest part of what we do. Yeah. Is is just pressing on with the almost drudgery yeah. of, you know, oh, all right, I know what's happening here, I know what's happening here, and all of a sudden something takes over and it's it's spiritual. Yeah. It's it's very spiritual. It feels that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, um, we just have a few minutes, and so I, I want to invite you to give us a sneak preview of what's coming in May. Um, yeah. The continuation of the Janet Fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a companion novel to to um, Faithful, titled Forgiven. It's not really a sequel. No, it's not. No. Um, it's a very different story. It, mm -hmm. And that's because it's a very different character. Mm -hmm. I follow the character of Kula, who is a secondary character in Faithful. Um, and she's so different. She's very action-oriented. She's very... Um, she's, she's got a, a toughness and an edge to her. And I wanted to take her out of her environment and put her into some into a new situation that will be very stressful. She goes to San Francisco. It's set in 1906, so it's two years later. She goes to San Francisco, um, experiences the uh, great earthquake and fires of San Francisco, and experiences her own growth um, from a girl who bottles a lot up, holds herself in, is tough, but holds herself in, and has to, has to become someone who, who understands what it truly means to reach out, and what it truly means to to feel um, strong emotions and express them, and so that's Kula's story. Kula Baker will not be denied. <laughs> no, she will not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm excited about your readers discovering Kula, oh. uh, but once once they've read Faithful, I know they're going to want to dive right in. Oh, thanks. and so. Um, well, Janet, I just want to tell you thank you for joining thank me today, you. and you. best wishes on Faithful, thank and you. then Forgiven in May, and um, I think I think you're well on your way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It's so, great to be here. So there you go, my homies, the wonderful Janet Fox and her new novel, Faithful. Thanks, Kathy. You betcha. Mm -hmm.